I think back to the times in junior high school uh, where me and my friends would sneak some games into computer classes. We would play games like Halo Combat Evolved, but after the school installed programs to prevent us from downloading software without permission, me and my friends had to find other games to play, mostly in browser games, obviously. I have a nostalgic memory of games like Adventure Quest and the game that I wanted to talk about today, RuneScape. My name is Tyler, but I go by Anxiety or Anxiety Disorder Online, and this is a video series that doesn't have a name yet, but will be named later. I specifically played RuneScape 2 in about 2006-2007 era, and I have been wanting to look back at the game for years now. As a kid, I never owned a membership to the game, and played free-to-play only. And with that, it gave me an idea for a video series where I play MMOs on a free-to-play account and then give my opinions on the game, how welcoming it is to new players, and how likely I personally would be to move over to a paid membership. Most players likely will play MMOs in a free-to-play account before deciding to move over to a pay-to-play account. And I would like to do that with MMOs on the market currently, and what better place to start with my first MMO I ever played. I will disclose now that I do have a paid account in the game that we're talking about today. Basically, it was an old program on an old dusty hard drive that they randomly found in one of their studios one day, and after seeing a bunch of fan servers for RuneScape 2, they decided to implement it as a lot of players didn't really enjoy the changes that were made from RuneScape 2 to RuneScape 3, which is RuneScape 3 is now renamed just RuneScape. And because of that, Jagex has been kind of updating and implementing current, uh, content that was in the games at the time, slowly over time, as well as adding new original content to the game as well. I will say, even though most of my opinions will be about free-to-play accounts and how welcoming it is to newer players. The footage that you're going to be seeing and you have been seeing will be of membership content. And that's mostly because I just, that's what I had at the moment. As well as there's a new boss, Circurus, Circurus, I don't know how to say him, that was, that went live today as I am recording this and I kind of wanted to just have that playing in the background because it's kind of the new stuff. So I want to do some sandwiching of both positive and negative things that I wanted to talk about. Kind of give it like the compliment sandwich concept. The first one that I wanted to talk about is that tutorial is fairly decent for new players. Tutorial Island is pretty good and nostalgic for older fans as well and it does show you the whole concept of what the game is about and gives you kind of an idea of how the game is played. I will say that there is a major issue as well with tutorial that the game has um, and that is mostly on Jagex's side as it feels as if they aren't very proud of it or if they have it in their head that Jagex doesn't just has this opinion that it is not so good and they have even floated ideas of changing the tutorial and with the track record of them changing their tutorials because they've apparently done it multiple times if you know any history about RuneScape multiple times they have changed the uh, tutorial and because of that it's been poorly received and is even done worse of a job than Tutorial Island does which does bring me to my next thought is yes they floated the idea for changing it and that's because the next plus is that Jagex does listen to the player base. They listen to the player base in such a great way they actually have pull booths to uh, pull players in game at the banks and a lot of their updates are not actual just things that they drop randomly. They are things that they are asking you the player base to get permission from to work on and add to the game. Good examples are they're having they're adding a, a new skill called boating, which was a skill that was kind of a joke back in the old days when I first played, but then they actually had polls for to vote and see if, yeah, I want sailing, you, no, I don't really want sailing. 
and you know it got passed that the player base wants sailing as the next skill that we get in old school runescape and to go off on a tangent about sailing real quick personally i don't want sailing i think it's kind of a lame idea for a skill i really like the concept of warding more but what are you gonna do people want sailing for some reason and hell it might be great who knows but to get back on track it is a very big positive in my opinion that jagex specifically listens to their player base and even asks permission of the player base to add things to the game like everything that is added to the game seems to have been voted on by some at some point and that's great in my mind but on the downside for this i do think that development of these updates and ideas to kind of give these small showcases to ask the player base hey can we work on this is a little sad when the player base votes no uh, to go back to warding a little bit they did have like a concept as well as mechanics and even a small little you know demo of what warding would be and players voted it down which meant that all of those assets all that time and all that development is just now thrown out the window and that just feels really bad as that means that jagex's re resources just were thrown out the window and it can feel rough for the future of the game in my opinion to keep it running if they're constantly devoting themselves to projects and things that the player base just votes down and they have to throw in the trash now i don't think that old school is going to be shut down because of these things because old skill is actually their more popular of the two that they run currently games but it still just feels bad to see a lot of love and development go to waste and they may not just all go to waste i mean they could repurpose a lot of this too most likely but it, it still just feels bad. Moving on to another positive point, I wanna talk about how easy the gameplay actually is, most of the time. The game is a point and click adventure mostly, as left click is pretty universal and does most of the things for you. And if it doesn't, a right click and it'll bring up a menu and then you have a few options and one of those options is probably what you want to actually do. Um, good examples of this are like, when you see just a random man or woman character it has the options to attack to talk and then if you're in a member world you can pickpocket as well but overall you have a lot of options with the right click or with the left click and the right click just kind of does the universal first thing that the game thinks you want to do in the same vein though i would like to say that the left click being the primary thing for both movement and interaction is a little problematic and can be frustrating in certain situations uh making some uh, quests just click here click here click here and then if that doesn't work right click here right click here right click there and as well as i really wish the wasd keys controlled my movement and my click was only the interactions i don't i'm not a big fan of click being both walk and interact or attack or anything like that what are you going to do for a game that has apparently been around since 2001 it also clearly shows that games like monkey island was a heavy inspiration for the game as monkey island is a very much a point and click thing as well as you know a lot of the time some missions or quests or whatever you want to call it in that game are click on item hope it works here click on the location you want it to work if not try something else and a lot of runescape does feel like that as well the game is pretty simple and has a lot of time killing that you can do with the game the game is very simple and has a lot of time killing in its nature a lot of tasks and actions can be done with one click for example you could click something like a tree like an oak tree and chop wood from it until you chop that tree down and then click on another one and repeat that process but in between that time of waiting for you to complete chopping that tree down completely you can go and watch a YouTube video or work on school assignments or write a script for a video about RuneScape. Doing these idle tasks allow you to perform what the player base calls AFK actions. 
basically performing a task with a very low uh, needed attention. So you can split your focus between multiple things and have this one just be low on the priority list. And it allows you to still make progress in the game as for some skills it's the only way to level them. This is even more beneficial if we talk about the fact that this game is also runnable on mobile. So you can do this on mobile as well to kill time on a bus or on a car ride or wherever you may have your phone and have nothing to do. But like everything that I'm going to be talking, mostly going to be talking about, it also has a negative in its own vein. The fact that tasks are not super engaging so your mind may wander and other things. And this is not just in cutting wood, mining, fishing, but it's also for combat as well as the combat system is just click and watch. If you get distracted too much and don't pay attention, you could just die. And this game has kind of a unforgiving death system where you can keep the top three items basically or three random items from your inventory but all the others are lost unless you get to your great uh, where you died and pick up everything first in low level combat it is very little mechanics so combat is just a click and watch like i said and that can be rather boring at times uh the more challenging air quotes uh, combat that free to player players have is barely a little bit more than just click and watch as there's not as many mechanics that you have to learn in pay to play there is a lot more mechanics and a lot more you have to learn from these bosses I would also like to mention the amount of content that free to play players have I would also like to talk about I would also like to talk about the amount of content free to play players have access to it is a good amount in my opinion to see if you would like to continue your account to a pay to play system you can make it up to level 99 in a lot of skills but i would personally make the argument unless you really hate yourself or you're really devoted you don't really have to go past 40 in any of your combat stats because you do not gain any accessible armors or weapons or whatever past 40 because everything else past that is members only and you could argue it could be used for PvP, but 40 is kind of the limit for PvM, or PV environment. And because of this, certain aspects of the game can be fill, or can fill as if you are kind of locked behind the fact that you are free to play. A lot of the times you'll see a level up system, or the level ups uh, message, and then when you hit continue, it's supposed to tell you what things you've just unlocked for leveling up at that point. But after 40, you start to see a lot more members only get this. Like for example, you know, you might at level 40 defense, you'll see can wear rune now, but at level 50 defense, it's like members can wear dragon or whatever. And it's like, cool but I'm not a member so what's the point point? and on the fact on on the subject of being members and not members I would also like to talk about bonds as I have thoughts about this uh, bonds are items that you can buy for real world money for from the Jagex website and basically it's a item that they will give to your character in that on the account that you tie to the purchase and when used in game it gives you two weeks of membership but the thing is is you can also buy bonds and sell bonds on the grand exchange the grand exchange is a live market where players can buy and sell items to other players basically think of it as the auction house or the market board or whatever you may know it from from other mmos yeah, the bonds on the Grand Exchange can be sold. So you can go out and buy a bond and instead of using it or redeeming it for your, your character, but you can also sell it on the Grand Exchange. And in a way, I feel like that is buying money in the game because there will always be people out there looking to buy the bond. And if you're selling one, that's just an easy, I think it's like 9 million gold for one so it's a little a little weird there but at the same time I personally like the concept of being able to earn bonds by paying in-game currency 
to purchase one on the Grand Exchange. I think that's really, really cool, as it means that you could have a free-to-play member account, essentially. Even with my reservations on Bonds, I think it's fine and is kind of a cool concept, and I'm surprised there's not any videos, or at least that I've seen yet, where players do their best to make money at, on a free-to-play account to the point where they can buy a bond on the Grand Exchange, and then they try to continue their membership as long as they can without spending a dime of real money. Thinking about it, it would be a very interesting series on like a YouTube video, but would be kind of a bleak thing in my opinion for a player who isn't doing this for like entertainment purposes or for informational purposes on YouTube, but they're just doing this as how to continue playing the game in member worlds, is that they, you know, log on somewhere between eight-ish hours. Their only priority is making money, uh, making gold and making money so that they can then buy a bond to continue playing the game. And it just kind of feels like they're not getting anywhere, especially if they like stick to the same money-making scheme every time, because eventually, whatever that money-making scheme is, you may level the, you know, that skill to 99, and then suddenly you're, you're like at max, and what's the point of continuing that money-making scheme at that point? You basically also become kind of a bank sitter, which bank sitters are essentially the people that stand around at banks or the Grand Exchange and will like fletch or cast spells or whatever to level a skill right next to a bank so that they can go into their bank and pull out more materials to continue doing that. And I just don't see that as much of a enjoyable aspect of MMOs. But that's just me. Other people can find that very fun, in fact. But to get off the concept of like finances and stuff like that, I do would like to talk about quests and the end game as it's a big thing as well that I wanted to talk about because I have a lot of opinions on this. I would like to start with the quests. Uh, free to play quests are very nostalgic, very simple, have some pretty funny moments and are really goofy, but others are not so fun. <laughs> they are filled with personality and a charm as well as some goofy dialogue at times as well as quests like Dragon Slayer are very enjoyable for the finish that makes you feel like you've accomplished something but for every Dragon Slayer I would say there is something like a Romeo and Juliet which has goofy dialogue yeah but it drags on way too long and there's like no reward whatsoever for that quest so it feels like a nothing burger of a quest. As well as I personally feel like these quests, excluding Dragon Slayer, really don't prepare you for PvE at all. Uh, mostly because the game, the in-game bosses of free-to-play uh, were made much later than the quests were. Um, and because they were made such later in the timeline, uh, their philosophies on how the fights were are much different. A good example is Elvar in Dragon Slayer is very different than the end game uh, of free to play kind of leans towards with Oberos, I think is how you say it, Orbo? or Ob uh, I can't say his name. He's a giant. And the two, the philosophies between these two fights are very different. As Elvar just has like one attack and is really about gearing up to fight her. Whereas Obor, that's his name, that's how you say it, Obor, has mechanics of like a knockback as well as a ranged attack and things that fall from the ceiling. And so you have to learn how to use prayers, how where to position yourself, how to move out of the way of falling rocks, and so on and so on. That makes the fight much different than Elvar, who is the biggest challenge up to that point. As well as the end game of free to play does kind of lean towards just earning gold for bonds or earning gold so that you can do other things and that can be good and bad depending on the player's play style <sighs> and which brings me to my least favorite part about in game which is pvp 
I'm not a PvP player at all, really. In my opinion, there is a problem with how PvP is in free-to-play worlds as well as in non-free-to-play worlds. To give you a background, uh, the most valuable items, resources, and XP gains are located in a zone called the Wilderness. It's often abbreviated to the Wildy. In the Wilderness, players can attack each other and kill each other and the further you go into the wilderness, it will increase the level of the wilderness, which allows higher level enemies to be able to attack you. For example, in level 1, maybe level level 30 to 70 people can fight, but anyone above 70 can't fight. Makes sense? As well, in level 20 locations, you can't teleport out anymore, which means you can't get to safety before someone kills you anymore. My personal problem with the wilderness is, again, the fact that there is valuable things out there, high XP gains, and important items that you can't get any other locations. And there are players who know that. So if you're out there trying to earn money or leveling, you can be easy prey to players who are PKers that just hang out there kill weaker players and take their gear. So all that money that you tried to obtain by collecting some rare item or whatever that's out there can just go into the hands of someone else just because they're a higher level than you. And for some that's fine because the wilderness is completely optional technically as well as you know you are told the risks before entering that location. But my argument is already been presented to you. The most valuable things are out there the highest level gains are out there. Some unique items that you can't get anywhere else in free to play are out there. And it's the most efficient way to make gold. And in a free to play account, making gold is very important because that's how you become a pay to play membership. Especially if you do not intend on spending actual real world dollars on this game. And because of this system, and because how it's just PKers preying on the weak and then taking their things, it kind of becomes a system of while you're going through the wilderness as a player who's not confident enough in PvP, you are hovering the logout button the entire time you're going through there. And the second you see any other player or any th signs of another player, you immediately log out and if you have the option to hop worlds to a different world where hopefully no one's there. But if you have no option for that, you just log out, wait like 10 minutes, log back in. So basically, it the fact that there's so many valuable things out there, players all know that and so they'll kill you for them, makes people not want to do PvP. And it, this is even worse in pay-to-play servers or membered servers because they have things like the PvP arena and Last Man Standing and so on and so on where PvP can be done, but yet you will still see them out there killing players and taking their things. We have environments where you can do the air quotes skilled PvP. I put air quotes around it because I haven't seen it be very skilled, but yet I don't look for it, so I have no respect for it. But if I did, sit down and learn PvP and saw how people played it, then yeah, I might have some respect for it. But PvP arenas, Last Man Standing, Castle Wars, all those things are where it should stay. I don't think that there should be a location where it's the highest value, you know, money gain with a lot of high level enemies, but yet there's also players out there who can just kill you on the spot because they're like twice your level. And you could say I'm harping on this subject for a while now, but I do feel like it's needed to be talked about because either you're going out there to be lured by a, a older player and you're a new player not knowing what it is and then killed, or you're going out there to try to get gear and money and you go out there and get killed. And as a new player, you'll lose everything, start from scratch now, and you most likely don't come back to the game. And you need players to stay playing the game to support the game. So when it comes to players that are new to the game and they go out there for whatever reason and they just die, lose all their stuff, they're probably not coming back is all I'm saying. But anyways, that, that's too much on the wilderness and PvP in general. Uh, the last thing I do want to talk about is the amount of things you can do to in interact with other players. So we have things like clans and friends lists and team capes for the wilderness stuff. 
but that's kind of where it stops for free to play and honestly it's kind of as far as it goes for members as well but we'll get into that in a second um a good way is obor uh you can fight you can only fight him in solo there is no public one where there's a group of people who can fight them all at once no he is only a solo fight in an instance which kind of sucks because if he's supposed to be teaching you kind of mechanics of more competitive things why not have groups of things i want to move into a tangent to members worlds because this is also important because this is one of the bigger draws of members in my opinion are raids and in-game dungeons and stuff like that and i want to talk about the new boss sakuris sakuris i don't know how to say his name feels like it's a letdown in this way as well because either you go into a public fight where there's normally somewhere between like currently i should say somewhere around 15 or so people on average fighting him at once and because of that he dies so fast so you do not learn the mechanics of the fight you have to remember this is a mid-game content where it's supposed to be teaching you how to do raiding kind of content where you have to learn movements and what prayer to use and mechanics like that but if there's so many people in there and do they just constantly are standing in there killing them i i you'll see in this video there there were many times where i just didn't use my prayer and i just kind of ate through it and just killed the, the thing that's not really teaching us the con uh, the uh the mechanics but it's also really difficult to kind of gather loot and it feels bad that all that loot's just kind of nothing a lot of the times but on the other hand you can go into a private instance of the fight and fight him but you can only do that 1v1 that does allow you to learn the mechanics of the fight and learn the concepts of the raiding thing but that's not a social thing and makes no sense for an MMO so a lot of this makes the game not feel like an MMO in my mind but why can't in Obor or in this new boss why can't I enter a private instance with a party that was invites from my friends why can't I start a clan chat or a party chat and invite players to this and allow them to enter my private fight with the monster so that they can help out and they get their own individual drops alongside my drops for me how hard is it because every other form of an mmo has this concept where you can just go into a thing and have friends invited along to play with you i'm not saying that this isn't a thing although i feel like it isn't uh, i am rather new to this concept of gameplay and raiding and bosses like that in general so i could be wrong and friends can be invited to your private fights but there's no information out there for it and so at this time i'm running under the operation that this does not exist please tell me if it's not true what i'm saying here though i would really like that overall though i do feel like runescape is worth looking into and i recommend players to play f to see if you enjoy the game and if you do move over to membership like i said i have myself the game is nostalgic the game is nostalgic a good idle game fun to play with friends at times and is a game you could play on the go as well the f game's faults are noticeable but not to an extent that would ruin the game most of the time as well as you if you know your limits you can avoid burnout in the game which is probably one of the most common reasons why people play uh, stop playing this game altogether so in conclusion i'd recommend looking into it if you have a nostalgic feel for the game i would recommend it if you're just new and want something kind of super easy to play I would recommend it well i have been anxiety and that's all i wanted to talk about in this game really but it, if you see this and you have opinions on the subjects that i've spoken of before i'd love to hear them as long as they're civil and respectful also if you have any ideas for what this video series should be named i'd love to hear it as i i've been not really sure what to call it anyways Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.